as it infiltrated deep behind enemy lines to establish targets for a precision airstrike, a group of four elite Spetsnaz commandos was suddenly ambushed by a force of over 40 ISIS troopers. The overwhelming attack had left three Russian agents severely injured and incapable of fighting. Now, as they were encircled by a superior force, the only one standing between the Spetsnaz troopers and annihilation was Lance Corporal Dennis Portnyagin, the unit's youngest member. In an incomparable display of gallantry and fearlessness, the young man grabbed a machine gun and confronted the attacking horde himself. Despite being engulfed in enemy fire, Portnyagin managed to take down 14 ISIS targets and hold the rest back for several minutes. Portnyagin prevailed even as bullets struck his helmet and armor, and when he ran out of munitions and the enemy was ready to capture the Spetsnaz unit, the Russian fighter prepared a batch of grenades. He would fight with them and, if necessary, detonate his own team before risking being imprisoned and tortured by the enemy. As is the case with the most lethal special forces in the world, his feats would have been impossible if it wasn't for the elite and often excruciating training he had to endure. Recent footage of the brutal and multidisciplinary training regiment Spetsnaz recruits are forced to endure has taken the world by storm and made the legendary actions of Portnyagin much more plausible. Ruthless and Effective As a remnant of the Soviet Union, Spetsnaz is the colloquial name with which several Russian and former Soviet special operations groups are known around the world. Born in the height of the Cold War, the elite commandos have inherited a vicious and aggressive combat doctrine that was once designed to train the best fighters in the Soviet world to face off against elite U.S. special forces. Even as the Soviet bloc dissolved and the Russian military lost much of its former might, the Spetsnaz retained a great deal of the lethal effectiveness and callous combat tactics that have cemented them as a dreadful menace to the Western world. Much of the concrete details of their operational capabilities are veiled behind the myth and massive propaganda apparatus of the Russian regime, but it is clear that the Russian special forces can execute highly complex missions with a brutal show of strength and merciless demeanor. On October 23, 2002, the world witnessed the effective, albeit ruthless, methods of the Spetsnaz when a group of 50 armed Chechen terrorists seized the Dubrovka Theater in Moscow, holding 850 innocent audience members hostage and threatening to detonate the entire building. After several hours of unsuccessful negotiations and the execution of two hostages, the Spetsnaz was summoned to resolve the incredibly complex and risky situation. The commandos then infiltrated the premises and pumped an undisclosed chemical agent into the theater. As the poisonous gas began to take effect, the Russian commandos breached the main hall and eliminated every single terrorist without suffering one casualty. Most of the hostages were rescued, but 130 perished due to the secret gas, which the Russian government refused to identify, even to medical staff trying to save the people's lives. Despite fierce international criticism, the operation was deemed a massive success, and the world was introduced to the ruthlessly effective methods of Russia's most elite special forces. Infamous Training After many decades of being kept under wraps by Soviet and Russian governments, footage of the excruciating training that Spetsnaz members are forced to endure has become viral online. The availability of the videos has led many to suspect that they are part of a Russian propaganda campaign. Nevertheless, the footage seems to support the common perception of the special operations groups and the infamous reputation the unit has earned throughout the decades. Training in the Russian special forces is reported to be very similar to the one recruits must undergo in order to join other elite special forces groups, such as the British SAS or the American Delta Force. The skills honed during the training sessions revolve around preparing the recruits to conduct covert operations, sabotage, assassinations, and reconnaissance. And even as the reputation of the Russian military has dwindled during the last months, the Spetsnaz continues to be regarded by many military analysts as one of the most effective covert operations organizations in the world. Joining the Club To join the elite group, Aspirants do not need to have previous military experience, 
but they are required to undergo regular military training before commencing with the Special Forces training regime. Spetsnaz training is designed to push the recruits to the very limits of their spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical capabilities, and significant attention is placed on pain tolerance and emotional resilience. The program's challenge level and pressure output increase exponentially with each passing week, a mechanism that acts as the ultimate filter, leaving behind only the most capable and resistant troopers. Spetsnaz aspirants must pass several tests inside increasingly challenging assault courses under constant live fire and explosive detonations. They also learn unique martial arts techniques focused on maximizing lethality and using melee weapons in hand-to-hand -hand combat. By the time the training is over, they are masters at exploiting the ballistic knife against enemy troops, and they can also use the entrenching tool with lethal effectiveness. When left without even the most basic melee weapons, the Russian Special Forces can always fall back on their martial arts skills. Since the days of the Soviet Union, Spetsnaz recruits have been trained in a unique and highly specialized martial arts doctrine called Sistema. Sistema displays the features of many other martial arts across the globe, like Sambo or Krav Maga. Even so, it is honed for lethality and speed. The sportsmanship elements of the martial disciplines are removed, instead leaving a brutal and opportunistic combat method specially developed by the KGB. Even when numerous influencing disciplines can be identified in the Sistema doctrine, it does not have a clear predecessor or defined methodology, as most of the masters of the craft give the fighting style their own spin and signature. To the ends of the earth. Spetsnaz agents are trained to be deployed in any part of the world. As such, they undergo combat drills in the most extreme conditions possible. They must be prepared to traverse ferocious rivers, fight in ice-covered mountaintops, and survive in the most inhospitable deserts of the Middle East. They also learn how to use a wide array of equipment for any given environment, and they are trained in amphibious warfare and paratrooper drops, including Halo or High Altitude Low Opening, to infiltrate even the most remote and well-fortified enemy positions. Furthermore, their mind is a primary focus of the training regime, with recruits studying foreign languages, cultural norms from many parts of the world, and basic infiltration tactics, such as lockpicking and computer breaching. Training becomes even more specialized and rigorous when an aspirant wants to join the naval Spetsnaz. A member of this unique unit has to learn scuba diving, the use of underwater explosives and weapons, canoeing, beach assault methods, submarine entry, and underwater swimming combat. Only a tiny fraction of recruits have the resolve, physical prowess, and emotional resilience to make it through the training regime. However, once they do, they come out the other side with some of the most lethal and formidable skills of any soldier in the world. Thank you for watching Dark Footage. For more exciting military content, click on your screen and check out the rest of our Dark Documentaries channels, where we explore the most epic and groundbreaking technology that changed the course of history. Also, hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest content. Stay tuned.